Howdy folks, welcome back. This cute little machine is a JCB model 520. It's a telehandler, loader, forklift, whatever you want to call it. It's here because it won't crank, it won't start, it won't move. It's completely dead. And you're not going to believe why. This thing is just cute as a button. So it's got a little four-cylinder Perkins diesel engine, four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, and then the bucket, it raises up and it also telescopes out. I believe it'll lift 18 feet high. I think that's like a little over five meters high. I don't know what the payload is, but it looks pretty beefy. I bet it can lift a fair amount. Anyway, pretty simple diagnosis on this one. The customer knows exactly what the problem is. Let me just wipe off some of these tears. So I guess he was tired of catching his foot on this trim panel when he crawls in and out of the machine. And it was missing some of these little plastic nuts that hold the panel on. So he thought he would just go ahead and drill through this frame rail and install a nut cert. So he could put a regular bolt in here to hold this trim panel on. And unbeknownst to him, there's a wiring harness underneath and he drilled right through the middle of the wiring harness. So there's probably a dozen wires there that are damaged or completely severed. They're all yellow wires with a green stripe. But the good news is they appear to have circuit numbers. So I think if we can get enough of this loom peeled back, we should be able to figure out who goes with what. Hopefully there aren't any three-way splices in here. Looks like that might be one. Anyway, that is the problem. So he, he cut a, an access section out of this cab rail, but I think in order to fix it, we're gonna have to actually pick the cab up. There's just two bolts here in the front. It's on some rubber mounts. Anyway, I think if we can just get those bolts loose, we can pick the cab up, you know, yay far, and sneak that wiring loom out past the bottom of that frame rail. So that's the plan. Yeah, that was a bad day for him. A very, very bad day. <sighs> I'm pretty sure this is one of the cab mount bolts here. The other one is underneath of this plastic trim panel. So got that loose. I don't think I have to take it all the way out. But it would appear that some of our snack stealing friends have been in there. Yeah, so we need some suction. That's the good stuff. Yes, sir. That's the other bolt. I bet there's a nut in the bottom of that thing. That's pretty devious. Oh. Yep, we're going under. I was able to sneak down in here beside the engine with an angle wrench and get on that nut. So I've got that one off. But the one on the other side I don't know what we're gonna do about that. It's clear down in there past the starter motor. If I could raise the boom up and take off that side cover, no problem. But it's gonna to be tough to do that without the engine running. Guess we'll see if we can get to it from the bottom. 
Otherwise, we might be able to just pick up this one side of the cab. I don't know. So I think I could reach that nut from the bottom side, but I can't possibly hold the wrench from the bottom and turn the ratchet up on the top. So I think what we're gonna do, we'll jam this thing in here. We'll just see if we can even pick the cab up. If we can get it up a couple of inches and sneak that harness out, might not have to fool with it. Oh, does this thing actually work? Are we out of oil? Well, apparently this was stored improperly because it is completely out of oil. Can't imagine who would have done that. all she's getting. There we go. Well, I may have discovered where the oil went. We better get some blocks under it before she all leaks out. Jeepers. Nope, that's pretty sketchy. got these little machinist jacks not sure what the actual capacity is on these I think they'll hold this cab up just fine what's weird is these are both sterret and I believe they're from a matching set but this one's fine thread and that one's coarse thread Well, that's all we're gonna get. But I think if we can open it up, it'll be enough. So we're gonna try a new tool. This is a Menda 35250. A kindly viewer sent this to me. If I understand it correctly, you're supposed to slip this underneath the harness, or underneath of the sheath here, and then you can cut down into the valley of the tool, and it saves you from cutting into the actual wires and I gotta be careful because you can do just what I did there and get underneath of a wire so we gotta watch that well that's pretty slick you now I've had a lot of people tell me to use a seam stitcher or seam seam ripper whatever it is I've never tried that before, it probably works fine, but this tool seems like the cat's pajamas. It's just almost unbelievable. He couldn't have hit that more dead center if he tried. Alright, well, the trick here is to not crisscross the wires which if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that I am prone to do. 
So, yeah, we're going to have some here too that I think are going to be a little bit short. So I don't know what we're going to do about that because we don't have any slack in this harness. So we may end up having to piece it together with some short jumpers. What a mess. All right, folks, here's the plan. I've gone through and separated the loom and I've tied back the wires on the right side that are not damaged and the few wires here on the left side that are not damaged. So this whole big wad here has at least some damage. I've already gone through and spliced a couple of them just as a proof of concept. I think it's going to work. My plan is to start with the wires that are just chafed and we'll patch those up first and then we'll move on to the wires that are cut. The problem is the cut wires when we splice those back together, they're going to pull the whole wiring harness together, make it shorter. So the more cut wires I splice, the harder this loom is going to be to deal with. We're going to use our tried and true method, uninsulated butt connectors, and adhesive lined shrink tubing. Let's get to it. I wish I would have had him put it inside. I don't know what I was thinking. I had some stuff in the way or something. I could have just had him put it right on my shop floor. Because we're gonna be we're gonna be working in the dark here pretty soon. Stupid short days here in November. Anyway, let's get to it. What else should we have story time? While I'm working on this. It's a pretty boring and tedious job. My brother's got a dump truck and he got a warning from the DOT that he needed to have his fire extinguisher secured in the truck. Couldn't just be rolling around. 803A, 803A. Okay. So he bought this clamp or holder or whatever you want to call it to attach the fire extinguisher to the floor of the truck. And he goes to install it with some self-tapping screws. Puts the first one in, goes in just fine. Puts the second one in. And it goes in a little bit harder. Didn't quite understand why. But didn't think anything about it. Went to start the truck up. All of a sudden he's got a big air leak. That's right. He self-tapped his way right through the floor of the truck. Right into an air tank that was underneath. So I, myself, back before the days of YouTube, I used to have a, a Morisiki SL20 CNC lathe, 855F, 855F. One day I went to power it on and it wouldn't, it wouldn't boot up. The fans would come on, but the control wouldn't power up. So I opened the cabinet on the back, everything looks good. And I opened up the control panel, you know, behind the keypad and the monitor and all that. And goldfish crackers just fell out on the floor. So after I cleaned up all the crackers, I figured out that the mice had also helped themselves to the wires inside that cabinet. 
and it was kind of like this. All the wires were blue. All right. 855F, 855F. Okay. Now the difference on those machine tools is that the wires don't have labels on them like these wires. They're only labeled at the terminals. So I spent probably two whole days with a wiring diagram, pinning out every connector and every terminal inside the control panel and slowly splicing those wires back together. There was even big pieces of them that were missing. Oh boy, the phone never stops. Anyway, I luckily had a really good wiring diagram for that machine. All right guys, that's the process. Slow and tedious, no matter how you do it. I won't make you watch the whole thing. I'll bring you back when it's done. All right, folks, we are done. I believe I spliced 41 wires in this harness. I feel like I did brain surgery or possibly I need brain surgery. It's one of the two. Anyway, it took me about three hours. I actually ran out of daylight yesterday. I had to finish it up this morning. I've gone through and double checked, triple checked. I don't think I crossed any wires. I believe we are ready to try this out. And I hope it works because we've got a storm coming in. Anyway, here we go. Let's not get our hopes up. Uh, yeah, we got nothing. Okay, well, I kind of figured on that. You know, when he ran that drill bit through the harness, he probably shorted some wires together, so. Yeah, let's go see if we've got some fuses blown. Well, actually, the fuse box is right here. Yeah, let me look through that. See where we're at. Maybe the battery's just dead. Well, just visual inspection, I don't see any blown fuses in that box. And the battery is charged. We're not getting power from there to the key switch. Let's check this guy here. Uh, yeah, those 30s are blown, both of them. I don't have a wiring diagram for this machine, so if it's anything beyond a blown fuse, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Well, I got a couple new fuses. They actually call them fusible links. They're, they're bigger than a normal J case fuse. PAL 30, I think is what they call them. At least that's what Little Fuse calls it. Let's try this again. Hey, we got stuff. Still won't crank. All right, I'm just not turning it far enough. Good deal. No lights on, tack works. Power meter works. I think this is the immobilizer. 
Oh yeah. All right, folks. I think we're good. Like I said, I don't see any fuses blown in this panel here. Guess I better go through and test them all. Just to be sure, but I think we can go ahead and wrap this thing up. Do what we can with this big bundle. And set the cab back down. We're going to have to weld that patch back in. Well, I want to wrap this harness in some of this cloth tape, this Tessa tape. But there's no way I'm going to get that gigantic roll through there. So we're going to try a little trick that I learned from you guys in the comments. I'm going to wrap a bunch of it around a small socket, 9mm in this case. Say the hardest part about splicing those wires was trying to get get everything to lay right because if you get everything twisted up it just makes this wad bulge thing even bigger and harder to manage it's not too bad Sure, that'll work. You wouldn't think it'd be so hard to get a ground to make a good connection to a bare metal plate. All right, folks, ground down the welds, hit it with some paint. It's like it never happened. Uh, I don't think the rib nut is a good idea, so I welded a bolt through from the backside. We'll put a nut on the top. We don't want to have a bolt running down there beside that wiring harness. That's asking for trouble. Well, speaking of the wiring harness, I got it tied back up to the bottom of the cab. So yeah, we're ready to set the cab down, and we should be done with this project which is good because it's starting to rain.
Cool. guys I'm pretty happy with that everything works except for these lights up here at the top of the cab I'm not exactly sure why so the relay here has power but it looks like it's been bypassed maybe so they they're pulling power off the control side of the relay to power those lights uh, but I'm not sure why it doesn't work with the switch on the control panel. Uh, without a wiring diagram, it's kind of hard to, to track that down. He may end up having to just run a patch wire for that one switch. That would not be the end of the world. We've got everything else. The dummy lights seem to work. Windshield wipers, horn, headlights, hazard lights, ignition, glow plugs, the interlock for the parking brake or whatever it is so yeah it looks looks good folks that's it thanks for hanging out with me did we learn anything i mean besides don't drill a hole through the door frame of your jcb telehandler i don't know maybe we did maybe we didn't uh, i always try to predict you know what i'm going to get the most comments about i never get it right i suppose this time it's going to be that i should have just bought another wiring harness or a new wiring harness and maybe you're right. I don't know. If this was a, a car and it had colored wires and we were trying to just match up colored wires, I think it would have been hopeless because, you know, there's always like five purple wires and eight orange wires and 10 red wires in an automotive wiring harness. But because it had those circuit numbers, it was actually a lot easier to match it up than, than an automotive application. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a JCB telehandler. You don't just run out to the local pick and pull and grab another wiring harness. And I, I didn't even inquire about about a new one. It's a pretty involved deal. You got a, you've got the fuse block and all those relay blocks all built into the wiring harness. So I would imagine, number one, that it would be very, very costly if you can even get it. And number two, that it would be a lot of labor to replace that guy. Anyway, I'm cool with what we did. It works other than those top cab lights, but I mean, that'd be an easy fix, I think. So all's well that ends well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.